Hello. I'm U.S. Representative Congressman Danny Davis from the 7th Congressional District of Illinois. And as citizens of these great United States, we are all aware that our nation's investment on infrastructure has contracted, and many of our critical public systems are falling into disrepair. As a result, American manufacturing has declined. We are losing our worldwide competitive edge. The American Society of Engineers estimated in its 2021 report card that $6.1 trillion is needed just to repair our nation's infrastructure. Of that, $2.6 trillion is not financed by budgets, leaving a large and growing financial gap. The areas of need are vast. They include roads, bridges, freight corridors, and mass transit. We need to fix electricity grids, dams, ports, and airports. We have to clean our drinking water from lead poisoning and other toxic chemicals. Nobody should have to drink lead-contaminated water, adult or child. This is unacceptable. We need broadband everywhere and millions of new units of affordable housing to finally end homelessness and housing insecurity. We need 7 million new units of affordable housing to end homelessness and the housing crisis. We must bring water into the parched regions of the Southwest. We need long-term projects to bring water into the Colorado River Basin. This is where we grow much of the nation's food supply. It will cost at least $5 trillion that is needed over a 10-year period to do this. To our credit, Congress passed the Hallmark Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act in 2021. I was in the middle of that. It was a great beginning. However, it needed to provide more investments in our economy to cover the list of projects I just outlined. Therefore, we need to build on that great start. Unfortunately, Republicans are more focused on messaging on initiatives that are meaningless and not effective, and budget cutting than building the nation. Bank lending is down, and Congress has agreed to put a cap on new spending. Ladies and gentlemen and young folks, building our nation is not spending. It is investing, investing in our country investing in our future to solve problems, create innovation, grow technology and industry, and sustain our economy for many years to come. And that's why we need to return to our historical model of financing public infrastructure using a national bank. We had several successful national banks in our nation's past, starting just after the American Revolutionary War and extending through Franklin Delano Roosevelt's Reconstruction Finance Corporation. The Reconstruction Finance Corporation, along with other sound initiatives, helped to get us out of the Great Depression build up manufacturing, and won World War II. It made Chicago a manufacturing and railroad center of the country. We need to use proven models and creative solutions to overcome our present and future challenges. For these reasons, 
I have reintroduced the bill, H.R. 4052, the National Infrastructure Bank Act of 2023. This National Infrastructure Bank would complement budgets. It would capitalize existing treasury financial instruments held by the private sector, exchanged for preferred stock. The National Infrastructure Bank will be self-sufficient, stand on its own two legs, and will require no new spending, taxes, or deficit from the federal budget. It will pay family-sustaining prevailing wages and create millions of new jobs. This will uplift the poor and middle class, just what was done to end the Great Depression. I'm very grateful to all of you for building support for this legislation. The grassroots have always carried the nation to its greatest achievements. It is precisely this kind of grassroots effort that can move the Congress to do the right thing, and together we shall. Thank you.